But the global demand for dairy is still rising. Even with all the plant-based alternatives available, it's clear that most people around the world are still buying into dairy industry marketing. Then I discovered that change might happen in a totally unexpected way. A major international report from Rethink X predicts that making real dairy without cows will wipe out the global dairy industry by 2030. Once it's cheaper than dairy from cows, big companies like Nestle could switch their milk powder supply to the animal-free version. And our milk powder exports could be doomed. Rethink X are saying in the US dairy industry, something like a 90% reduction in their cow numbers within a decade. How realistic do you think that report is and how worried should New Zealand farmers be in terms of them having a sustainable career? I think they should be really worried. I think the last thing the dairy industry should be worried about is a 10% greenhouse gas emissions by 2030. I think they've got to worry about will they even be around in 2030? We're going to see the most consequential shift in food production systems that we've ever seen in the past 10,000 years. Cow as a technology will become redundant. This new technology is exponentially more efficient and that means that we're seeing a huge, incredible shift, the biggest one in humankind in the way food will be produced. I went on the Rethink X website and saw that this animal-free dairy is made by microbes instead of mammary glands. These microbes are instructed to produce dairy proteins. They go into a fermentation tank along with feedstock, and when it's finished fermenting, the microbes are filtered out, leaving real dairy protein that's identical to what's found in cow's milk. It's also made with 5% of the resources, 1% of the waste, and 0% of the cows. And because it's real dairy, it tastes exactly like what we're used to. But it does come with some of the health risks that animal proteins are linked with. As I was looking into this coming agricultural disruption, COVID took over the world. In lockdown, I read about the spread of zoonotic diseases, those that jump from animals to humans, like COVID-19. It turns out that many devastating diseases have come from animals, including Ebola, SARS, HIV, and measles, which originally spread from cattle to humans. I was alarmed to see that the increased demand for animal protein is the number one risk factor for the emergence of zoonotic diseases. Now seemed like a good time to talk with people who could tell me more about Dairy 2.0. Milk made without cows. As soon as you remove cows from the equation, the business of dairy becomes much, much easier and much, much more profitable. The milk created without cows would completely blow the traditional industry out of the water. Fermentation, the way that you produce beer, is going to be the way that you produce proteins. Essentially, it's going to be 10 times cheaper than animal protein. Cows cannot possibly compete with this. And the same fate is going to happen with all livestock. Pigs, chicken, sheep. First, cows, because they are the most inefficient food production system on the planet. The cow produces 96% waste. Of everything that it consumes, 96% is waste. So essentially, you're building up this cow for two or three years, and you need all this land and all this energy and all this water, and 88% of that milk is water with no economic value. There are companies already making casein and whey here in Silicon Valley and around the world, directly with precision fermentation and selling it to cheese makers. I have eaten cheese from a Kiwi company that is making precision fermentation cheese here in San Francisco. When did you start New Culture and what's it all about? So I started New Culture in uh, early 2018. What New Culture does is we make cow cheese without the cow. That's animal free, that's sustainable, and that's indistinguishable from the dairy cheese everyone loves. 
And what's actually very interesting is that this process of making an animal protein without the animal is already used in the dairy cheese industry. And now over 90% of dairy cheeses today are made using this animal enzyme that's made without the animal. It is tough to be a Kiwi looking to disrupt the New Zealand economy in this way, but with the way the world's going, we need to change and we need to uh, be proactive about that. New Zealand's dairy exports could be wiped out without a single consumer changing their behavior from animal proteins to precision fermentation proteins. This is all a business to business disruption. When is that going to happen? The technology cost curve will determine that, the market will determine that, but there's no doubt that it's going to happen. I realized that this disruption is already happening with investment in fermentation companies at the highest level ever. Over $435 million invested in just the first half of 2020. Why wasn't everyone talking about the end of the cash cow? instead of saying there's no threat. Disruptions usually happen quickly and wipe out the existing system. Think of a forest fire. When the forest is tender ready, just a little spark and the whole forest goes. It's what I call market trauma. If you think your cash flows are going to drop by 90% over the next 10 years, then that is going to be reflected in your stock today. Not in 10 years, but today. Do you think New Zealand should be worried about these disruptive industries? We're looking for a premium and we have to produce better products, better quality products, convince consumers that you know they want the best nutrition, and then we can remain viable as a farming uh, country. The old chestnut of where there'll always be a market for premium products is, is just so cemented into the psyche of our leaders. The dairy industry, no matter how quickly they pivot, it's more like they're just shuffling the, you know, the chairs on the Titanic. Um, we need a new boat, um, animal free. When you have old, largely pale male style leaders, then to get that new dialogue coming through, it's, it's almost like pushing shit uphill. They're trying to slow down change. And because of that, they're constantly staying on the wrong side of history. What does that mean for dairy companies? What does that mean for the dairy community? What does that mean for New Zealand's communities at large? This is beyond Fonterra. This is our livelihood. And those are the sort of questions that the government really needs to be thinking about. And I think that's just too scary for them. It's just way too scary. I'm trying to wake New Zealand up to the fact that there is an urgency. The scientists get there long before other people get there. Lots of people have talked about pandemics, including myself, for years, and everybody ignored us there too. It's happened with the pandemic. It's happened with climate change. This is not about only destruction. This is also a massive opportunity. I mean, I see the precision fermentation industry as an emerging trillion dollar industry. I don't think we're at all prepared for a massive change of this type. And I don't say that to be alarmist, uh, more to be realistic. I would like to see more of our smarts being packaged up into intellectual property rather than selling carcasses or bags of dehydrated powders. New Zealand better prepare for this disruption, as in now, as in the COVID disruption. Those who were prepared and those who acted decisively are the ones who are gonna come out on top more quickly.